Good morning guys, today we're going to be looking at the Fortune Nameless plugin and in my opinion it's really one of a kind because there are not a lot of plugins out there that perform, feel or react like this plugin does so it's really worth checking it out and since it's aimed towards lower tunings I tell to myself I might approach it from a standard tuning perspective and uh, see how it performs from there. I've got my laptop set up here and the plugin looks like this so I'm gonna breeze over the functions real quick and explain how they work. We have two different jacks, a low gain input and a high gain input. On the high gain channel, we get metal sounds and tones we'd expect from bands like Meshuggah. Uh, but on the low gain channel, we get a Plexi 60s Marshall type sound. And this is very interesting because it comes in as a bonus sound. And I'm going to check it out as well and see how close it gets. Now I'm going to go for a riff. I've already recorded the DI, so I'm going to be able to tweak the parameters and show you guys what this plugin has to offer. So this happens when you open up the plugin. So we have an adjustable gate which is awesome and we've got an oversampling mode which immediately improves the tone but it's quite CPU heavy. Therefore I would recommend using it while finishing a mix but while tracking the guitars to take the oversampling mode to low. Next we're moving on to the 14 grand pedal. It works as a frequency selective booster. I think the analogy to it would be probably a TS9. It's cutting the bass and adding some extra mids. And this is perfect for low tuned guitars. Now we can exactly hear what this pedal does, it almost sounds like a wah swiping through the frequencies. Personally I would use it for the lower tunings because it's cutting a lot of bass, but it's a great tone shaping tool for all kinds of applications. Next we're going to the capstone section, we have a few mics to choose from and we can experiment a little bit with the mic placements. Now what we have to do is find the sweet spot on the cone and make sure that it's slightly off center so it doesn't sound quite as harsh. I think the point where it starts to sound the best is roughly and most balanced where the cone meets the dust cap on the speaker. And on top of it we can decide on the distance the mic has to the speaker as well. It's uh, really plenty of options here. This sounds pretty good so far, now I'm going to choose the second mic. Next up is the plexi sound and I'm especially going to be looking for some thick saturated mids with a good mid punch presence. Now this demonstrates the wide dynamic range of this plugin. It can go from really high gain metal sounds to crunch tones and uh, capture this kind of classic Marshall style as well. And another thing for what I would use it is for all kinds of synthy based stuff. I would uh, put lots of saturation on it and go through this amp to give me ex extra transients and uh, cut off a little bit of the bass because mostly if you use plugins like Omnisphere they are full range and they have lots of bass, a lot of information that's not pretty much fitting the mix most of the time in a band setting. So this plugin will definitely saturate a little bit, take a little bit of the uh, bottom end and give extra transients and it will fit better the mix, especially when it's a digital source to start with. So this would be my approach um, it's more convenient than reamping through a real amplifier and this plugin does a terrific job at it. 
So guys, that's it from me for today. I hope you got something out of this video. You can always comment and uh, give me some kind of uh, feedback about it. And yeah, see you all pretty soon. If you like, you can subscribe to my channel and we talk very soon. Cheers.